Happy Tuesday, Foot Clan. We've got a great show. We have the 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 slowest quick question of all time on today's show. Some great conversations about Keeper, Dynasty, everything you're looking forward to today. We have a lot of fun, and we're going to get into a few breakfast items. Make sure you like, subscribe, and enjoy the show. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Whew. Just sharp, quick, and biting. It was biting, wasn't it? It was a good cheddar. You know, it was just like a, sh- a sharp one. A sharp yeah. one? Yeah. 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 Award winning. Wait, wait, we're not back to cheese, are we? <laughs> I've never left. <laughs> Welcome to the Cheese Podcast. Oh, we're back. Tuesday, February 22nd, the Fantasy Footballers. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Judge, the Owl. We're all here. And happy to be back. It's good to be back. Yeah. How are you guys doing? We're doing fantastic. Uh, fresh off the FSGA trip in Las Vegas, which that is a, if, if you're not aware of that, that's a, uh, like the industry. Fantasy where, Sports and Gaming, gaming Association. Association. Yeah. yeah, you know, where if you're in the fantasy biz, you join up and then twice a year you get to go meet up with some people and play foosball. Well, yes, there, I mean, there is. <laughs> the, yes. Well, some people tried to play foosball. Uh, but they were also they had some awards as well, and we were reliant upon the Foot Clan for one for the social media award. Which I mean, if you're reliant upon the Foot Clan for anything, you yeah, that one's win. that they, one's all done. They don't miss. The nice thing is, so we've, thank you. We've thank said you for this that. for seven, eight years, however long this has been. The Foot Clan is undefeated, right? And the Foot Clan is still undefeated. Yeah. If you if y'all vote. We have never not won uh, whatever award. Never not voting. Never not <laughs> voting. Uh, we won a couple other awards, which were were, were great. We got yep. the uh, audio podcast, but and video. Yes, yes. But the main, yes, the you. main award, which really took some. I would. I want to say blood, sweat, and tears, but it took very little from it, us. Very little effort. I, I may have perspired slightly. Yeah, I mean, I usually am perspiring, so I'm sure it's <laughs> also true of me, but. Uh, they had just the, no blood or tears. The oh, first no. ever uh, foosball tournament uh, yeah. within the industry, and we've—I mean, this is such great news for us because we're really good at foosball, and yeah. so we we won. Uh, Mike and yeah, I, I don't know what down. it says about a human life when you're that good at foosball, but we are. And I told I told uh, Brooks on the Footcast that I didn't praise you yeah. because. As you, you don't praise have. people for something that's supposed to happen. That's right. As you said, you know. You Jason, don't celebrate the sun coming up. You just, just expect it to happen. It just does. So I said maybe if you'd shut everybody out or something, I'd praise you. But this Which, is, you did what was expected. You don't celebrate it, but you can admire a good sunrise. Oh, it's absolutely. Beautiful. It was gorgeous, Mike. <laughs> it was gorgeous. And I had a great view on that last point from the side taunting how, the enemies. How big was the tournament? I need to know this. Uh, Not big enough. Okay. I, th- I think there was like <laughs> 10. Yeah, I would ten, guess uh, about right. 10 teams. All right. Did you lose any games? No. no. Get out of what? here. I'm just making sure. There were no professionals there. This was well, there good was. That, there was two. This That's is good that I, no wasn't, other. I wasn't there because how would we have picked? You would have had to go on to a different team. So you would have had to lose. <laughs> That's... Hmm. That's unfortunate. Hmm. I say that because you were the one who wasn't there. Yes, I got you. All right. Otherwise, we would just we would just like rotate every point. Yeah, that would have been the fun. three of us. Uh, <laughs> welcome into the show. <laughs> it's foosball and cheese season. <laughs> foosball and cheese. Uh, Judge, you were out of town this weekend as well. Yes, sir. Had yourself a birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, Judge. I'm the big three five now. Three Ooh, five. Uh oh. Looking it down. The big three five, huh? Yep. Sounds yeah. like a new Paramount Plus show. That's actually uh, his height, three foot five. Okay. Nope, How are you okay. doing, Al? You I'm do, good. Do so you weird. do anything this weekend? Uh, I'm doing some reno on a new house. Okay. So All right. Everyone's that kept busy. Me busy. Uh, quick question for the day coming up momentarily. Uh, UltimateDraftKit.com. I want to remind you. The UDK, uh, the tool uh, most relied upon to dominate your draft, the draft day 
uh, experience and all of the research beforehand. It's available now for pre-sale. And here's the deal. If you order it before March 10th, so you got a little bit of time here. So go over to ultimatedraftkit.com. You get the lowest price and you get a bunch of perks. And if you do it before March 10th, you get a chance to win a listener league spot and play with us this year, which we did not win it this year. That is true, which, which is, means there's an extra spot open for you to claim. No, it doesn't. No. It's the opposite. Yeah. Oh, we. that's right. <laughs> we did not win it that's this backwards. year. That's backwards. Which means oh, that man. the champion gets to stay. Mm. So there's one, few, one fewer, fewer spot. spot. You, got, you better. So get in. Now, you see, yeah. you want to redo it? Yeah, which means it's even more exclusive when you win there at ultimatedraftkit.com. Uh, it's been a long weekend. You said you did not make good choices. You were watching some television late into the <laughs> night. <laughs> late into the morning. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, the Yellowstone had to be oh, completed. Gosh. and uh, You started watching shows at one in the morning. Yeah, I, more episodes, yeah. <laughs> okay. You're a wild man. He is. He is um, trying to get it all in before his next birthday. That's what I think. Ooh. His youth. Finish yeah. it up. Because <laughs> I'll be dead. <laughs> News and notes from around the league. Uh, we'll get into the quick question after the news. Oh, we're gonna yeah. co- we're gonna cover this first. Per usual, per where usual. we put it it's, after the news. That's right. Uh, <laughs> the commanders. The this is <laughs> look. We haven't done a morning show in quite some time. Boy, you're telling me. Um, there, w- there's some other news that I'm gonna start with, which is this ambiguous. Aaron Rodgers yeah. Instagram post that, mm-hmm. you know, if it wasn't Aaron Rodgers and his Aaron Rodgers ness, ness, I would, you know, you could take this as a sign he's walking away. Now, I don't know if this is leverage. I don't, it was just a very exhaustive gratitude post. It was a thank you to everybody everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, but it was, it, I mean, when you are saying those thank yous, yes, it's usually, in conjunction with a goodbye it's thank you and goodbye and so that's why people are does this mean he's retiring does this mean he's leaving the Packers his final picture of the 10 pictures that he posted was a picture of basically the spot where Aaron Rodgers usually stands but he was missing and so people are reading into it the the reality is this he loves attention and he's got it he seems to yeah so I that's what I was gonna say this is more of like a thank you and give me your eyes. Some somebody brought up that you know if he retires, if it's a walk away retirement, you'd end up going into the Hall of Fame in the same year as Tom Brady. Yeah, he's not. I don't think do he that. likes that. No, he would walk away and then put in his retirement paperwork next year. So we'll see. A lot of rumors. A lot of teams would love to have Aaron Rodgers. Obviously, how did you get a read on the uh, that that post, Al? As yeah, the, as, as the resident Packers fan. Uh, I, I don't think he's going anywhere, but I think okay. he just likes the spotlight. But a lot of my Wisconsin family was texting this morning saying they thought maybe they're worried he is going to walk. Yeah. There's some panic. Yep. Favre will come back. They'll be fine. <laughs> uh, the combine starts next week. That is super exciting. There was a momentary um, belief that there was going to be kind of a holdout, if you will, from many of the um, competitors of the combine because the NFL instituted this kind of forced bubble, the NFL has walked that back. So we should have, unlike last year, a, a pretty much full combine at this point. NFL free agency in two to three weeks. So that'll be exciting. Franchise tag window is open now. Mm-hmm. Man. So that news. What an come. off season that was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we have some reports, multiple reports, actually, that the commanders. Manders. Thank you. Salamanders. Uh, want to re-sign impending free agent J.D. McKissick. Makes sense. Uh, I, You know, you look at Antonio Gibson, and you look at the level of, I would say, the workload. And it makes for an interesting dynasty discussion overall, where he just he's one of the most used backs despite the... Just give me a kiss! 
We were talking about Gibson, not McKissick. You he, missed. He, he said McKissick. No, you missed your window. No, that is window, illegal. Honestly, window is any time in the 30 seconds after the name is mentioned. I think he filled in the uh, Mad Lib there because I said in I spite in... of the, oh, and then okay. I think he hit it. So I, I took a poll, about 5,000 of you weighed in, and I was surprised. Uh, what was the question? The question was, what is Antonio Gibson in a dynasty, a buy, mm. sell, or hold? Before I answer the poll results, if you, neither of you have seen it. I have not. No. What do you believe he is? I believe he is a hold. I believe the poll it will react to the news and say that he is a sell. I think he's a buy. So I expected more in the buy camp. Only 12% said buy, 42% hold, 45% sure. sell. Um, when you see that level of work... That means you go trade for him right now, that's personally. Kind of, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I don't... I'm not intimidated by McKissick returning or not returning. I'm more intimidated by health and sure. and other reports that they may bring in another veteran free agent. Like, if you go buy him now and then they bring in... Fournette. Yeah, somebody like... Which they could. Well, Fournette, that would be devastating. If yeah. it was someone like Fournette. The, He's been hurt a lot. Yeah, I mean, he forced his way through the season. He only actually missed one game. I know. Even though he was often on the, the injury report. And even if McKissick comes back, you know, it, it it certainly stops the hope of... You know, Third you down know, dominance. Right, where it's like, oh, Antonio Gibson, three down running back, has an elite pass catching ability, and he's he's good on the ground as well. So maybe that goes away. Uh, but he was still utilized a lot in the passing game, uh, a decent amount, I should say, before McKissick had his injury, and he was solid for fantasy football. So the top five, perhaps that that hope and that dream for Antonio Gibson that goes away. But that does. But he's still a top fifteen guy. Yeah, I agree. And he, I mean, just the workload. There's very few backs that got as much work yeah. as he did. They need to find a quarterback. Been rumors about that. Um, what else? Joe Burrow doesn't need surgery. That's good. The MCL sprain from the Super Bowl, and then Zach Taylor was extended, uh, which if you make the Super Bowl, your agent runs to yeah, the office to get that thing done. It's basically a guarantee. Uh, and what else? Anything else in the news front we need to talk about? Kirk Cousins likely to remain the starting quarterback for 2022, although there were rumors this morning about the Panthers calling about Kirk Cousins. Mm. Uh, some teams getting desperate. I think – I think the most desperate teams are the Washington Commanders and the Carolina Panthers. Manders, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anthers. Um so I was I was looking through uh the free agent quarterbacks cuz there's I mean there never really is, but it's like someone is going to be a bridge quarterback for sure. for, for some a of one these year teams. start or something. Yeah, and saw some chatter uh on Twitter people talking about it of like Trubisky might get another shot. Probably should. Yeah, he's better than. I mean, I, I as as much as I enjoyed making fun right. of Trubisky, and I I will enjoy it again. Um, Certainly, the, he is better than some of the starters in the NFL right now. He uh, he got to the playoffs yes. twice, I believe. Uh, yeah. So I mean, yeah, he can obviously manage, and maybe he learned a thing or two uh, with Brian Dable and and Josh Allen, and that that could have been good for him. So I I, I do think he is an upgrade over a few quarterbacks in the league. I agree. I agree. I think he has he may get another shot to do that. Any other news, Brooksy? You got anything for me? No, sir. Let's get to that standard placement of the quick question here uh, right, right after the news. Let's kick off the middle of the show. Ah, uh, so quick that we do it later. Um <laughs> Jacob Atley from Instagram writes in, does Michael Thomas still have top 10 potential? So uh, if you don't know who Michael Thomas is, <laughs> <laughs> he was once a great wide receiver that broke the all-time reception record with Drew Brees. And it's been a minute since we've seen Michael Thomas out on a football field doing things of relevance. I believe two seasons ago he came back towards the end, was limited sort of, and wasn't the same guy. Missed all of last year. With a strangely timed surgery that uh, was like, Right before the season started, it was as it was as well timed as our quick question. Yes, yeah, that's appropriate. Yeah, he he had the the ankle issue that that cost him in twenty twenty. He decided not to get surgery, and then 
had to have surgery basically going into 2021. So in 2019, three seasons ago, the last full season we saw from him, he was the number one wide receiver. But that was obviously a much younger man. He's 28 now, so he's not he's not past it. Uh, is he 29? 30. 40. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm seeing 29. But. The answer to me, top 10 potential, is that the question? He is 28, oh, he'll but be, he will turn he'll be 29, 29 in a few days. Yes. Unfortunately, okay. I'm going to answer yes. If it was top five potential, I think the answer is no. But top 10, uh, sure. Sure, he could be some, he's still somebody that you could end up as a complete and utter volume hog for an offense. So I think it is possible. Yeah, I mean, the issue here is clear. It's the quarterback. I don't believe that Michael Thomas has lost it, is done, is spent. He has obviously been injured, so he's not been on the field. Um, but I don't think at 29 that he's going to come back and be a bad player. I do think he's going to come back and be on a bad offense. And so it's very difficult to be one of the top wide receivers in a poor offense without a good quarterback. We don't even know who the quarterback is. So does he have potential? Absolutely. They get a good quarterback, boom, bam, done deal. Uh, as of right now, I, I, I bet he would be outside of my – top 10 wide receivers like my my draft rankings I'm guessing yeah. he will be outside so the potential is there but the expectation I don't believe is there have you guys seen the workout the latest workout video it's from so good James Winston no <laughs> just stop no, recording I, these never oh, he never stop he recording the, these he has the best workout videos we he, need Jason to mimic side by side all James Winston workout videos. Yes, they're I would, always I would so love wacky. To do that. He's it, just he's just moving around in the pocket. He, he takes this. Uh, and he, are there brooms related? No, no, no. This is just or pool noodles. He just wanted to show you know how good the uh, the knee is. He takes a you know a shadow snap and drops back to pass, and then he's going to the left and going to the right, and right. going dropping way back, going all over. I mean, he's going for a ride. He gets about five hundred steps in as the pocket is twenty yards wide and deep. Um, showing it's wonderful. It is great. All right, I'll pull that. Something up. about him doing those and the, the expression on his face during all drills. Yes. It just combines to be magic for yes. social media. Well, and then you see it really pay off on the field. <laughs> <laughs> he was okay. Uh, I will. I will say he he surpassed my expectations yeah. last year, but my expectations were low. <laughs> they I, were very low. He was definitely okay for Thomas. It's just like what is. There's two there's, years of dust on him, Mike. There's do you, two years. Do you try to get him in a dynasty for a little ride here. I mean, people probably want to get rid of him. Maybe cheap, because uh, it's like Gabe what, Davis. Feeling like, uh, yo, I would trade Gabe Davis for Michael Thomas. I'd take that shot. But it's like, what? Is, what really is the upside? Because his his upside was always he had the most accurate quarterback of all time. Yeah, targeting only him. It like Thomas was. Was a great route runner, it, but he was never beating people with like dominant athleticism Down on the, the field. field. And he, like he's already shown, like social media wise and publicly, like when things are going wrong, he causes a bit of a ruckus. Like, uh, so I just I I do not trust Michael Thomas at all. So top ten, it's possible, but. I I don't see it happening. Let me, let me give you an interesting one, and I think I know what side you take. But what if you were staring down like Kirk, um, Adam Thielen connected to Kirk Cousins for another year, or taking a shot on a little bit more from Michael Thomas? I'd go Thielen. See that that's I, interesting. I think I would go the other way. I think I would go Michael Thomas, looking for multi-year production. Yeah, because Thielen's probably the clock is. Oh, the the clock is definitely running out. Um. Okay, but like Thielen, he when when he's the step that he has lost on the field, it doesn't take away from he's still very big and and is dominant in the red zone where like Brandon I use Michael Thomas. Thomas. Uh, wow. Okay, that's a yeah, Brandon Ayuk. I have to abstain from this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you ready to get into the mailbag? Yep. Mailbag. Mailbag. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Did we mention that it is Tuesday? Oh, that's right. 
Oh, it's Tuesday. We're getting in on the hype. I see. I see what you did. Two, twenty-two, twenty-two. Oh. On oh Tuesday, did you not realize? I didn't realize how many layers there were. Uh, yeah. It's a Tuesday. Wow. Welcome. I need to do something today. <laughs> Two related. That no, just it's memorable enough to say, yeah, I remember when I did that. It was ah. on Tuesday. Gotcha. I'm going to punch one of you guys today. <laughs> and then you'll be like, remember that time you punched me? Yeah, it was Tuesday. I know the exact date. Uh, <laughs> There's probably a lot of other things you can come up with. No, nope, it's one of you two. Mm. Keep your eyes peeled. Um, here we go into the mailbag. If you have a question, you can send it in on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Uh, Instagram. We just, we just really don't need to be violent like that, though. Thank you, Brooks. Okay. Thank you, Brooks. Yeah. Well, Brooks believes in two things: pacifism and pizza. Yes. The wow. two P, the two P's. The, t- as he the calls great them. two P's. All problems solved with a pizza. Oh, <laughs> two P's. <laughs> um, I'm a pizza Pisces, guys. So. Oh, a pizza Pisces. Yeah. I'll punch you, uh, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Dave. I'm new to Dynasty Keeper Leagues. Can you explain the difference between the two? Yeah. So a Keeper League is usually where you're going to retain one to three players. That's the the most common. You either get to pick one player or... Uh, you or, know, three. or three. Or <laughs> three. Listen, any any number, any combination. Maybe two. Maybe two players. Maybe two <laughs> players. No, but uh, where I was leading with that is sometimes you just get to have them outright. Sometimes they cost you the draft pick at which you drafted last year or some you know uh, different rule set. Treat those leagues, and this is a really important piece of advice if you are new to Keeper Leagues. Treat those leagues purely like a redraft league. Do not get crazy with, I'm going to have the younger guy, right. age matters. Like If you're keeping three or fewer players, you can keep a guy that you had no idea. Halfway through the season, you could pick someone up who should be the guy that you keep um, whereas in a dynasty league, you're keeping your entire roster, and they're deep. They're 26 to 35 players. Uh, you could have 27 players. You could have 28 <laughs> players. <laughs> However many players within that range. Um, well, what about 29? Well, sure. Uh, or 30. Okay. Um, this is good. Yeah, but you could – I mean, you could also have 31 players. 22? Or – I don't think so. I think that I said the range was 26 to 35, <laughs> so 33 okay, <laughs> or 34 to 32 players. Listen, I will say that in a, in a smaller keeper league with like one to three keepers, there are a couple of players that meet that, like the super running back seems to be the one that can multi-year hold. Yep. But outside of that, you're right. I don't think that they're, you know, Christian McCaffrey for a few years, Dalvin Cook, Jonathan Taylor, you know, these players have kind of ruled at times, but it's something that people don't realize. Most of the time when you transition into a keeper league, there is tremendous mental energy given towards who are my three players. I'm going to go make trades based on getting three players. I, I want to hold next year. Mm -hmm. And by the time you get to next year, generally speaking, one to three of them are, almost not worth keeping. And so your plans can't be built so around that. A lot of times people will overemphasize youth in keeper leagues. It's not necessary to overemphasize youth. So There's a, a really good follow-up question here by Zach on Instagram saying, is it best to dive right into a dynasty league or should you start with a keeper to kind of test that? And though, like we just said, they're totally different. Yes, a, they are. If you A, a keeper league should not be the strategy of a dynasty league. So jump right into dynasty. Dynasty is great. It's a blast. And the nice thing about it is it pairs so well with your traditional redraft or keeper leagues because there are fewer transactions necessary. There's not a lot of waiver activity. So um yeah, jump right into a dynasty league. You can find it on you can find new leagues at footclanleagues.com as well. Yep. Yep. And both in both of those you're transitioning to activity in the off season. That's really what you're doing. Before draft day comes you know, you have relevance or the players and what's happening out there is relevant to you and your team and your league, and you can have off-season trades and discussions, and that's what makes them engaging for people that want to, I, I would say, kind of take the next step in commitment to fantasy football. Uh, let's jump into a voicemail. 
Hey, guys. The Broncos' offense has three good wideouts, two good tight ends, and running backs who can catch the ball. Even if they get Rodgers or a significant upgrade at QB, could there still be too many mouths to feed to make any pass catcher really all that fantasy relevant? Thanks. I'll hang up and listen. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I think there's too many mouths to feed. for Too many mouths for one to be elite? Probably. Just just thinking because you have to think about the mouths, Mike. The yeah. actual mouths themselves. Okay, yeah. And so, you know, if I told you today that Aaron Rodgers is their quarterback, now Javante he's safe. He's great. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. But outside of him, I'm not sure that we'll all say the same name about who's going to lead the fantasy production in the wide receiver core. Somebody might say Judy, somebody might say Sutton. Is Tim Tim Patrick's under contract? I mean, I don't I, I probably put my I'd probably bank on Sutton to be to be honest with you. That's who I would just based on experience sure. at the pro level. But I think if if Rogers goes there, Rogers like when Rogers is playing at a high level, he removes the too many mouths to feed. Like if he has elite players. James I, Jones. Right, yeah. We had the jo year. Jordy Nelson. Jennings. It's a long time ago, though. No, well, I, I know there we've was. Been, we've been doing the gamble dance with the Lazards and the MBSs. But I don't. But those wide receivers are not on the level of Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy, uh, in my opinion. And so if someone like Rodgers or somehow, you know, like Russell Wilson is one of those other Hall of Fame type quarterbacks that could find himself on a new team, then no, I'm, I'm still going to be in on the the top two guys, Fireball Jones, yeah. a.k.a. Tim Patrick. Hmm. I mean, he's the third option. If Rodgers is, is he there, though? I think so. It, when when those two, when Judy and Cortland Sutton are going, uh, Tim Patrick is the number three guy. Yeah, and, then, and I'm not worried about Albert O or Noah Fance. Like, Rodgers just, if it's, I guess I'm tailoring this to Rodgers. Rodgers specifically, we've never seen a dominant fantasy tied in that at least I can remember it, am, I, am I missing something like no I mean you had, you really. had Tanyan had a nice year you had Jermichael just Finley but just touchdowns bit. yeah yeah I, mean, I I would agree on that sense but the truth is I I would be surprised if Denver lands one of those two Hall of Fame quarterbacks and so the point that this caller is making I think is correct I think there are too many mouths to feed for a non-Hall of Fame quarterback and I will probably be out on all of them you know if, if they go and get Jimmy Garoppolo I'm out on all of them, uh, other than obviously Javante. Uh, Javante, if he if if Melvin Gordon leaves, I think he's going to be a superstar. Yeah, it's a tough situation because on the NFL side, it's one of the most attractive places for a quarterback to go. They do have every piece yes. piece there f uh, ready to go. Now, yeah. I just said they're not going to get Aaron Rodgers, so I do expect is that, coming that, through? Like, that Aaron Rodgers is. <laughs> Did you just check your phone to make sure? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just know because last time I said that you know when when Fireball signed his contract. That that meant Cortland Sutton was gone, and and he signed moments he signed later, immediately. Yeah, please break in with the Aaron Rodgers to Denver news. Let's do another voicemail. Hey, ballers, love the show. My quick question is: How do you approach a total points league? Have a good one. I'd go for the most points. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the best strategy. You yeah. want to score more. It might be tempting to score in middle of the pack points wise, but I would go for the tops. Um, I don't know that I'm doing much much different here. Um, <laughs> You're Al back there. Compared to a head to head league, would like I, I'm still formulating a, a team that I think is dominant. And I mean, yeah. you, you may look towards. Um, I mean, would you go, Jay? You were you had your first experience with zero running back, where the the idea of your team getting better and better and better like you, it almost like a snowball type of a situation because you are actively you're proactively grabbing backup running backs that will fill in uh for you occasionally and then you're loaded at wide receiver and tight end and quarterback yeah i mean there is something to that strategy in the sense that you're you know, in a in a head to head league, you just need to win every single matchup, and you know, and it doesn't one, matter how much you win by. Exactly, one week at a time in a total points league, you really have to have the the highest, you know, in the in the most explosive roster. It can't just be one that is a good weekly start sit decision uh, better than your opponent. So zero RB does lend itself there, but the truth is, I I don't think. You know, zero RB. I'm not doing at the beginning of the 
first round, you know, I'm, I'm not going to just pigeonhole myself into that. I would do that if, if I'm at the end of the first round and no wide receiver's been drafted. Otherwise, I'm pretty much taking the same approach I do in, in most leagues. I almost have the opposite opinion about the zero RB strategy in leagues like that because I feel like that lends itself to figuring out the RB position by the end of the year and then going on a playoff run as opposed to having a steady performance throughout the year to have higher total points. Yeah, Am I, I mean, wrong to think that way? Well, I think you are wrong. It's consistency versus upside. I mean, everybody, regardless of strategy, is actually trying to score the most points every single week. Correct. So at the basis of that, like, I, there's never a situation where I'm like, man, this is a real week to only score 100 when I could score 120. So I guess even risk aversion, you know, normally risk is associated with upside too. So I guess that's this is a long conversation to say nothing changes. For the most part, yeah. I mean, I... I if if a uh, the the reason is here that we say zero RB is that if a zero RB hits if you get the right running back uh you know off the waiver in week one or or whatever no one's going to score as much you, as you're, you as you are. yeah that okay. that will be the highest potential outcome so you know I'd be more open to that strategy wow Twitter question from Jacob is James Robinson worth an early second round pick in a dynasty league I don't think so no. No, not wait. Which way are you saying that? Because I would definitely give up a second I'm, round pick for James Robinson. I'm talking about a rookie. Pick. You would give up a high. I was misreading the question. Oh. So you guys, this is a rookie pick. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You're, you're talking about James James Robinson, torn Achilles. James Robinson is worth a high second rookie pick. I have seen James Robinson be great on an NFL field, and I think that the odds in this year's draft of a second round pick being great are I'm just as him. difficult i'm with him i'd do it i would not okay uh <laughs> twitter question from sean i like that you guys put this in here has anyone ever dropped a no-no word that had to be edited <laughs> out by the sensational producer borland have, I, don't, I wonder I don't why this no, is in here maybe with the sensational descriptor mm, i didn't put it in there mm, but mm. the answer is no i've never had to yeah, Sometimes we, we have to be a little careful about things may, maybe being said before or after recording. Make sure, <laughs> make sure I trim the ends well. But uh, during the show, no, these guys are pros. <laughs> we, get, we got good jokes before the show. Yeah, we got our, our professional filters are very good. The, the only edits of this show are usually caused by a number two. Yes, yeah. a number like, two or tech problems. Or which, number three. Which yeah, you, well, the, yeah, number three is covered by the number two. Right. Um, yeah, that's just both at once. So that's going to be <laughs> that's going to be included there. Um, but I, I would say tech issues. Uh, it is Tuesday. Are, <laughs> yeah, tech, tech issues are the number one thing that causes an, an edit. And, and that would be and that's the producer's fault. Yeah. fault. 100% what I wanted to get I know to. that it wouldn't make it into the show if we did this. But if we ever build another studio, right, for the mm -hmm. evolution of the show and we rebuild, we need a number two alarm. Like, it, I know we'll cut it out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I want a button and red lights. Because if anybody's in that panic situation, I, Gotta want them, go poop. I want them to be able to hit that button. See you gentlemen later. And we just nod. We understand. Yeah. I understand that what you've just tasked me with, and I'll make it happen. All right. Thank you, Al. Thank you. <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of upgrades going into future studios, so uh twitter from nick how to properly prepare and what to expect when wanting to make the transition from being an 18 league to a 10 team league so first of all that's great if you've got two more people that want to sure. play i think fantasy is most fun in 10 and tw 12 team leagues eight team leagues i feel like you have to manipulate some roster stuff to make them more because you can just be overwhelmed with talent and every week it's really it gets to be almost a coin flip for certain rosters sure. where it's like because it's all superstars yeah yeah exactly if you're if you're playing you know six on six and they're all top 10 guys that's not very fun yeah if you were already playing in an a-team league i think the first thing you have to establish is whether or not you've already made those changes like for instance most most leagues that i know that are eight because that's very that you know that's a very small league most of those have far more positions you might be starting three running backs, four wide receivers, two flexes. And if that's the case, you you might want to trim that back a, a little bit going to 10 teams um, and then figure out going forward if you want to uh, go back. But I, I would say there's not a ton of difference uh, pragmatically when you go from eight to 10. You're still going to be trying to grab the 
the highest variance players as far as draft strategy, uh, earlier tight ends, and you yeah, know. that's the biggest difference to me is when you're in an eight teamer. I'm I will overreach for in the past Travis Kelsey, you know Kittle Andrews. Of course, it doesn't always work out for the tight end, but when it's all superstars, you have to have. Uh, difference maker. a difference maker yeah. in your onesie position of at your quarterback or your tight end or or both and just that that scale slides down the more teams you add because once you get to 10 or to 12 when you're in a 12 teamer almost everyone's tight end position is garbage so you don't have to worry as much and you can make up for it in the uh the, the depth of your running backs and wide receivers Great question here on Instagram. Can you explain what goes into the consistency algorithm? One of the no, features we will never. Yeah, that's proprietary. Mm -hmm, we will never mm -hmm, speak mm -hmm. of it. Um, one of the features in jointhefoot.com and then obviously in the Ultimate Draft Kit is our snapshot tool, the ability to look at consistency. We rank players on the profile pages with a consistency score. Do you want to speak for a second about what we factor in there? Um, we did the truth episodes, which used those consistency scores. So, so the yeah, there there is a slight difference between what the consistency grade is on our website. Every single player profile, you can see a consistency grade, um, and then what the truth series does. There are two little differences. There's there's a little bit more of an algorithm to the uh, truth episodes, um, where we wait a lot more nuance to meh games, bust games, all of that. And then they, they aren't a rolling 17 games. The Truth Series is just looking at this season. Um, on the website, if you're looking at our consistency grade, those are a rolling 17 games. So their last 17 games played. So, you know, if someone only played five games this year and went back to last year or – really this is more applicable for mid-season, right? You're week four in. It's it, The grade is not just those four weeks. The grade is their last 17 games played. And if you literally just mouse over the consistency grade, we will we have the explanation, um, and it's, it's very straightforward and simple looking at how often that player is giving you a score that is above uh, a, a positive benchmark for that position. Instagram question. This one's important because I'm, I'm, my opinions have changed here. Really important. Oh no! Rank these pancakes, waffles, and French toast. Oh, I know what's happened. To yeah, you, you yeah, have and, become pro waffle. Look, guys, I may or may not have big waffle. God, got you in the, I, by the throat. I made a decision yesterday. I we went out to lunch as a family. Uh -huh. One of those all day breakfast places, which means I get breakfast, and I went chicken and waffles. Okay, that's yeah, that's fine. And I've been going waffles a little, little more than I expected, a little more than my pancake brothers have been wanting me to go. And I think I'm all in on the Belgian. I think the Belgian is now supreme. They're doing good work over there. They're doing great. Look, you guys, what what's one thing that you know I include with my breakfast bread? Butter. Butter. So much. It's it's unfair. Scary that you're alive. Yeah. So what of these three is most conducive to? stuffing oh yeah you butter. got butter traps everywhere i mean butter traps all over the place so i am pro <laughs> i am ranking waffles pancakes french toast and that is not to wow. say french toast is not st stupendous I, yeah i mean putting pancakes not I anywhere but the bottom of this list is i agree ridiculous just those are th that's the add-on that's it's the freebie. That's the Did freebie. You, you, you guys both put pancakes at the bottom? Oh, yeah. Correct. Cut, cut pancakes. Okay, and don't right. hear what i'm not saying yeah, i so will eat is, me some pancakes do i have another waffle in the house no, I'm a French toast. Uh, best the best French toast is better than the best waffle. The problem is, well, man, I would say they're even. Okay. But waffles aren't always great. French great. toast is usually fantastic. Yeah, we are. Jason and I are aligned. Mm. French toast, waffles, pancakes. Mm -hmm. Did you get any of that on your Vegas trip? Did you get any Fritz. French toast? No. Mm. Mm -hmm. But I also did not get waffles or pancakes. That doesn't sound like much of a trip to or me. Or breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, I will leave out the part where I was completely useless the remainder of the day. <laughs> I mean, utterly, they, it never went away. Like, I, you think, oh, I'm just going to be tired for a few hours. Mm -hmm. It was perma-tired. It was, why did I do that? Thank and you it, for and, leaving that part out. And the answer was, because it tastes so good. It is. It is. Butter is really good. Uh, would you trade DJ Moore for the 102 in Dynasty? That is the question <sighs> from Jedi Master. Would I trade DJ Moore I've, away to get the 102 in Dynasty? I feel like we were 
we had talked about DJ Moore recently. I would, Who knows on what show? It was like three or four pick, I yeah, think we said. Yeah, we got to that range where like, if you are – it's so difficult because DJ Moore is a great wide receiver, and it just like, – his situation does not improve, and it's hard to see a real quick resolution coming for that as well. That be, Not because they can't make a move, but because they already did – of uh, you know, trading away Teddy Bridgewater, bringing on Sam Darnold, and then giving him an extension before he even took a snap on the field, and now they've like hamstrung their salary cap and their pot committed to Sam Darnold. Of how do you get out from that situation? Will be um, if they're able to get out of of Sam Darnold, it will be a master move by the general manager. But DJ Moore is is you know he is excellent. But you don't know that the 102 will be excellent. I will not. I would rather have the 102 because I am looking at this at like DJ Moore is a great wide receiver. And DJ Moore might be younger than no, the I know. whoever you take at the 102. He's, he's a great wide receiver, but what, we're four years in? He is yeah. a good fantasy asset. He is not an excellent fantasy asset. I want a asset. chance at Justin Jefferson. I uh, want a chance at DK Metcalf. I want something like that. I'm right there with you. The 102 is high enough to where when you're taking this player, you have that chance. You have a legitimate opportunity to get a great fantasy asset. So it's you yeah, know I like that. Good versus great. Yeah, you know DJ Moore is good, but he I don't think that they're going to solve the quarterback issue and turn him great. So I would take the one oh two. If you are looking for our initial rookie rankings, right? You got the NFL draft coming up and you want to know what players are starting to uh build a buzz about themselves, what dynasty players are looking at our initial rookie rankings are in the Dynasty Pass, which is part of UDK Plus at UltimateDraftKit.com. You can see those. And um, that's really a great backbone for research as you head into Dynasty um, rookie drafts. That is going to do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate you, all the reviews over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen. Thank you so much for reviewing the show. It does help. Enjoy your Tuesday. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.